What's going on, family? I'm just here to remind you that you can get yourself a copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4 of the Caribbean, by visiting my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com, and help support me as I continue on my mission to make sure that my people have our information, even though, you know, there are many people trying to stop us from learning our history. But hey, we can teach ourselves. And one of the tools we can use is my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. Remember, visit my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com to get your copy. And I appreciate your support. The Little Known Story of the Burbice Slave Rebellion Between 1627 and 1792, the Dutch West India Company colonized a region between the Burbice and Kanji rivers called Burbice in the country of Guyana. Burbice was a small colony populated with around 3,800 enslaved Africans, 244 indigenous Americans, and 346 white people on 135 plantations. In addition to being a small colony, it was not very profitable and resources were scarce at the time due to global European conflicts. In 1762, several of the Dutch soldiers patrolling the many plantations became sick due to a disease outbreak. The disease reduced the number of Dutch soldiers controlling the enslaved Africans. In July of 1762, plantation owner Lawrence Conkler traveled to Nassau, Bahamas. During his absence, the enslaved Africans raided his plantation and escaped into the interior of the country. According to many resources, a few of the indigenous Americans helped Dutch soldiers attempt to recapture the Africans. A month later, the Africans were forced to relocate due to a lack of provisions. 1762 was also the year a number of the enslaved Africans attempted to rebel against the plantation owners and Dutch soldiers, but the rebellion was suppressed quickly. Though the rebellion was suppressed, the spirit of rebellion spread throughout Burbice. In 1763, Due to the continued inhumane conditions and treatment, the enslaved Africans of Burbice revolted against the Dutch plantation owners. From plantation to plantation, Africans attacked and killed the Dutch to free themselves from slavery. Several plantations were set on fire as the Africans began revolting. The Magdalenburg plantation was burnt down by the Africans enslaved on the plantation. They then traveled to fight the Dutch aligned with several indigenous Africans along the Quarantine River. At this point, the Dutch had the upper hand. That was until an African man enslaved in Burbice enters the picture. In February of 1763, Africans were leading a revolt at the plantation Hollandia. This revolt was a bit different because the Africans were organized as if they were a military. These Africans were led by an enslaved man born in Ghana named Kofi. Under the leadership of Kofi, the Africans began to gain victories and an advantage over the Dutch. Kofi and the African rebels were able to take control of the southern portion of Guyana, while the Dutch took control of the northern portion of the country. The Africans controlled southern Guyana for 12 months. Dutch control of Guyana was being threatened by the growing number of African rebels. Dutch reinforcements arrived in the form of 100 soldiers. The soldiers and the rebels battled. The Dutch were able to recapture a portion of the southern territory they previously lost. By this time, Kofi declared himself the political leader of the rebels and the man named Accra was the military leader. On April 2nd, 400 rebels led by Accra attacked the Dutch soldiers and gained the southern territory lost to the Dutch in the previous battle. The rebels were better equipped for the battle than the Dutch expected. In response to the rebel victories, Dutch reinforcements were brought in along with the plan to retake all of Guyana. While the Dutch were formulating their plan of action, internal strife was brewing between Kofi and Accra. They began to have opposing views on how to manage their relationship with the Dutch. Kofi wanted to formally create a truce between the Dutch and the Africans. Accra disagreed with the troops. Kofi contacted Governor Van Hogenheim to negotiate peace. The Dutch responded by saying that Kofi would have to wait three or four months for a response from Amsterdam. The attempt for peaceful negotiations caused a further rift between Kofi and Accra, so much so that the rebels split into two groups. Accra and his rebels were still attacking the Dutch soldiers. Shortly after, Accra and his rebels attacked Kofi and his soldiers. Following the battle between the rebel groups, Kofi ended his own life, leaving Accra as the official leader of the rebels. 
The Dutch continued to battle the rebels until the Dutch ended the rebellion in January of 1764. Soon after, Accra was overthrown and enslaved by the new rebel leader, Atta. The irony in the story is that even though the rebels were fighting to free themselves from being enslaved by the Dutch, they still practiced slavery for status within their free colonies, according to my resources. Kofi was a leader with the idea of Africans being able to live in Guyana among the Dutch in peace. Accra never brought into Kofi's idea. His idea was to gain freedom from the Dutch through war. Maybe Accra had a more realistic view of the Dutch and his clash with Kofi was in line with gaining true freedom. Or maybe Kofi's idea of living in peace with the Dutch was something to help spark racial harmony. The tension between Kofi and Accra was detrimental to the success of the rebels and the splitting of the rebels made them a weaker opponent to the Dutch. Without unity, we cannot gain true victories. For more information, please visit my website at www.ontheshoulders1.com. There, you can get your copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com backslash O-T-S-O-G. And you can also hit the super like button under this video. I love you all and make sure you catch the next video coming up.